In the previous video, I showed you how to, how to select your uh, the right size material. Um, and this is the material, I think it was 1.9, I think. And uh, as you recall in my little diagram, I'm going to reach over for it. It was, it was 18, what do we got there? It was 18, so 1.8 was the, as you can see, sort of sideways, 1.8. And that was the width of the balance staff. So this is the closest I've ever been able to get with a camera, by the way. So if this doesn't work, I'm not going to be doing it. So you just take the balance staff. Again, more apologies for the long guitar fingernails and long thumb for opening up watch backs and the messy cuticles for chewing on them probably anyway uh, so you take this and then measure it against this material piece of material and you've got to have enough in there to uh, to make sure that you can cut this away once you you do it and you've got your balance staff built so I'm gonna pull it out just a little tiny bit here uh, uh, probably right there um, and I didn't flatten the end of this I'm just going to use my graver to do that and so that that gives me plenty of room to make the staff and then do, deal with that so I'm just going to rest this here for a second and tighten that up and then I have to look and make sure that it I can make sure it's good and tight and I got to make sure this spins nice and round there's not a lot of warble in it so and it actually looks pretty darn good. And what I do is I feel it, I feel it with my uh, fingernail, and you can feel it going up and down with your fingernail. And if there is a bit of a uh, warble in it, you loosen it up and put a toothpick, under, toothpick underneath and push up on it so that it's steady. So I also take my uh, lens here like that, and I look at it really close or closely um, to see if I can see any warble there too. And you can see a little bit in the end, but that's where it was cut, so that's no big deal. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to look at it like this, and you got to figure out where to make your very first cut. So I'm going to, uh, this is the balance side of it on this side where my finger's pointing. So my first cut will be right where the balance lies against the, uh, the uh, balance staff, I'm not sure what you call it, but the widest part of the balance staff. So that's where I'm going to make my first cut. So I'm lining up the, um, the tool rest here, make sure it doesn't touch the, uh, the collet. So just, just off from the collet like this. So it's the tool rest, it's not, it's not too bad. It's pretty, it's pretty flat here. I think I filed this one before. And then I have to make sure that the uh, when I select the uh, when I select the graver that the graver fit cuts halfway up. So I'm looking at the graver here. I haven't installed this in my handle, but there's a the graver there, and and it should when I have my tool rest in tight, there should be almost no room between the end of this angle here and the tool rest should be very close like that so obviously my tool rest isn't close enough so I have to move that a bit closer and it probably isn't high enough let me have a look here yeah it's not high enough because I got too much of an angle I want it to be a bit a bit like that so the rake angle should be a little bit higher so I just have to grab loosen this joint or loosen the uh, tool rest and pull it up a bit and then tighten it down just a bit so I can so I can do uh, the measurement here so is that good enough uh, it's not too bad a little bit too high I want it to be just below so and I cut with the uh, the angled face downward so it's just my preference other people cut some people cut with it like this facing upward like that and some people cut downward I find it gets a better cut downward 
uh, but it's just a preference though. So that's not too bad. Um, I still have a little bit of distance here between the the uh, tool rest and the uh, graver. So that's that's perfect right there. That's the perfect distance to remove material. So and I think I want I'll just tighten this up. And I might want to lower the tool rest just a bit. Just a bit. There we go. So I just pushed it down just a bit. Now make sure everything is really tight so you don't have anything flying off. So that's lowered. So which means when I put my handle in and put this in the handle and like that. And then I, uh, that's my hand, that's the handle in there. And tighten it down. And it's got to be really comfortable. That's the the main, the, that's the aim here, is that this is very comfortable, so I'm holding it right now, and it's in kind of in the palm of my hand, like that, I can't show you really, but it's like this in my hand, and it's very comfortable, and so when I turn here, I can make a mark, so, so my, the very first mark I'm going to make, like I said, is going to be the high point of this balance staff, so I'll hold it with this hand, I can just Hold the hold it like this with your other hand. For me, it's the opposite hand. And you want to make your very first cutting mark on there, so you can hold the balance very close to to the uh, the part or the, the part very close to the blued steel, and make sure you have enough material to make a decent pivot on the end. So I've got it's pretty good there, I think right there now I'm just going to cut a line here so you can see that line being cut and that line is mapped up to where you see right here so I think I could probably go in a little bit more so I don't have to have so my pivots not too long in the end so but I can see how fat the line is and if I want to go in a bit there's no issue so so I'll do that so I just stick the part with the radico on the uh, on this and then just take away some material here I can't remember whether these things are sharp or not but you want to take away enough material that, that there's an indent and you can see it easily so There you can see that I've taken a taken away a good chunk there, and now I can just flatten this down. You don't have to spin the lathe too fast for this kind of stuff. Whether you go away from your lathe or toward your lathe, that's your preference. So. I know the end there is a bit rough, so I speed it up a bit. I can feel my tool moving in my graver, so I'm just going to tighten that a bit. Like that. And I notice this is magnetic, which is no good. So I'm not sure how I can demagnetize that. I might be able to, but I'm kind of pissed off that it's magnetic. but. Shouldn't be a terrible problem right away, but I may have to take it out at some point and demagnetize it. Now, if you recall, the balance fits on with the first cut being. Um, If you recall, the first cut of the balance has to be 12.2. If you look there, 12.2 right there. So that's when you can take out your uh, your tool. Let's grab that right now. And use a mean gauge and then just measure measure the end. Again, I got 
cameras and stuff in the way, but I'm doing this for you guys, so I'm a little pissed that this is magnetized. Maybe I can slip the demagnetizer over the whole thing, but anyway. So I look at that, and I got a lot of work, a lot of work to do, so if it's going to go down to 12.2, right now it's at the, the, where it is right in, right there is fatter than the end part, so you want, right now it's 13, uh, 10, no actually it's 17, 18, so I got a lot of material to remove, so, so I can work on this and, and remove a boatload of material, and I'll cut a little more with you watching, and then maybe I'll just turn it off and remove some material, and that'll be part one, and I'll integrate all the videos together, so, Right here on the end is kind of shitty, so I want to get this thing flattened, but I'll remove some material first. So. I'm just sort of cutting this part down a, more than usual. Just cutting it down a lot to see as long as the end part here is no more than the 12.2 I was telling you about, um, then I know where I have to go with the end. And then I've got to get a three degree slant on it. So normally I would cut it all down, but I'm trying to smoothen out that end part. So, And right now it's running at just over 14. So I don't have much to go. Um, remember, I can always test it with the balance itself. So, so that's 14. So if I cut the rest of it down to 14, right, it's easy to see where the line is there. And I can just cut the rest down to 14 and then try to keep an angle of 3 degrees from this point here to this point here. Make it 3 degrees. So I'll cut that down now. And you can actually see the slope if you look at the part and look at the background. You can see a slope. And you just maintain that slope so that when you start first start fitting your part on, uh, it's friction fit. So you just don't want to cut it to the exact dimension and then you got to be working it up the shaft as you do this. So it's, uh, I've made other videos on doing this, but I don't think I've had this much, this kind of close up here with these other videos. So, so I can chew a lot away here on the end here. I also hold my graver, it's not completely flat against the part, like parallel. It's got a bit of an angle upward, and that way I'm not too worried about the graver catching that way, because it can't catch if it's like that. So it's this kind of an angle here, like that, on the part instead of being completely flat. So like that and then completely flat. I notice the video kind of stalls sometimes when it's uh, recording because I got it on pretty high definition right now. So so let me, let me measure that again. So it's 12.2 is what I'm looking for in the end, right? Get the tool rest out of the way. Put your finger knee, finger under the part like this. And then measure the damn thing. So right now it's 10, 11, 12, it's 13. Right? So it's getting kind of close. So you you want to make sure that you don't overdo it. So just at this point I'll just grab the part itself and make sure I didn't make a mistake in the measurements. Remember the cup is outward in this case, right? So let's see if that fits on and it doesn't, which is great which means that my measurements weren't bad. So I can take a bit more material off of that. And looking at the back, and this part here has to be completely flat, right where I'm pointing, right there, because that's the balance rests against that. So it's 
got to be flat as heck. So I want to work work the end here to make sure I can get the part on first. Um, I can take a little more off without it without me worrying about it not being flat enough. You just pay attention to the angle. And then try to get rid of all the little inconsistencies in the way up. So I don't mind if I cut it a little more than that 12.2. I wish the heck I could demagnetize this bugger. But I didn't think I had a magnetized steel rod. That kind of sucks. I guess steel is magnetic, eh? Just run my finger along it a little bit here. And then take the part. And it's close enough now that I can actually take the part and see if it fits on. And then you just do that. And it's getting really close. As you can see, it just sort of hangs on there. Um, so I've got the actual 12.2 measurement. Make sure you rotate it a little bit to uh, to uh, ensure that it's not just stuck in this position. And all of a sudden, bam, it slides forward. So that is that is the dimension or the diameter that I'm looking for now. So so I'm going to um, start working my my way up that angle. And again, remember this this here. I'm exaggerating, but if this were parallel like this, you want about a three degree um, slant on this thing so and it's again you're eyeballing the three degrees so just take your time um, and what I try to do is I cut up to what I think the width of the arm is so if I look at the arms on this and I'll let me put this in for a second like that and I'll just look it sideways a bit so you can see it so if you look at the width of that arm that's basically the width I have to have remaining at the end so and Sometimes I just use memory work to do that, and then sometimes I'll take a marker and then mark mark that so I know exactly how far up I need to go. But I know I can cut right up to that without worrying too much, and I know that the next cut is an eight, right? The 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 uh, diameter of the next cut is an eight for the hairspring, so I'm way I'm way before the eight, so it's not a big deal. So I can cut a little bit more material away here. I'm going to flip glasses in a few seconds to get some close-ups here because what I don't want to do is go too far and realize that I've uh, I've overcut it. Let me see what that looks like when I put the part on. So I just do that. And you see how that slit, how far that's going on now? So that's that's the danger because you can overdo it and all of a sudden bam you're at the end so and I've got probably five five widths left to do or six widths left to do so I know I'm kind of almost halfway um, again you look at the look at the angle you have here and how fat it is on this side so I look I look how fat it is right there and I look back here and what's the difference there and you can you can actually see it if you just like say, look, you look at the part and you look kind of through the part. You can see it in the background. So I'm going to get my other close-up, close-up magnifiers on these ones here. Um, and I tested this just ahead of time to make sure they weren't going to uh, interfere with the camera. So I'm again hoping it doesn't interfere with the camera. So so I've got I've got a really good view of this right now. So I can I'm up close, big time. So I can be very uh, detailed now. I think I'll make a line where I want it to go. Say right there. And then just take material away up to that line. It doesn't take much material for um, this thing to be overcooked.
I think I'm going to measure it again because I believe I'm getting close. And let me put that on here. Got some metal in the way. Oh yeah, that worked its way right up to the top. So, so I'm fairly safe still because um, I haven't finished the last part. So I know that I know I've got a lip there, and I've got about three or four widths left. And I know if I put the part behind behind the uh, piece, I can see that that where I marked it, it's about one third the uh, the overall length of that, right? So, so I'm eyeballing it again because I want to friction fit it right to the top. So I gotta put that on like that, and then look at that, and then. Yeah, that's so that that fits. That is um, pretty friggin' close. So, so I don't want to go over that measurement. So there's where you got to really concentrate. So, because it's so easy to screw it up. So I want to take a little bit of material off here. I think that's probably going to go right up to that rim. And then um, I want to leave enough to uh, be able to friction fit it. So, so I can take a bit more off there. Yeah, so that's a bit high still. So take a deep breath here. Because if you screw it up, you just got to end up doing it again. So. that and then I'm gonna check the width of that final part here to make sure I didn't under like overcut it and that's pretty darn good I'd say that is it is the width so you don't want to take too much material off because you it's a friction fit so you gotta let it leave enough material for to finish the friction fit part right so there it is there. It's still not getting over this little hump here. So, but I think after I take, there's a little hump I can see, and I can take that piece of material off. It'll go all, it'll go all the way to the edge there. So, let me just get rid of that for a second here. that part there all right and you just have to yeah, slide it up there we go so now it's going all the way to where the, the last ramp is if you want to call it that it's still a bit loose I'm checking the side shake on it and there's not a lot a little bit so it's all the way up so so now I have to make sure that that uh, that ramp that I've made is going to fit perfectly. So I'm going to take just a bit of material off this because I got to have the angle or I'm screwed. Okay, let me try this again. So all I want to do, if you can bevel the edge there, then that's even better, but I don't think I can bevel that right now. So let me see how tight is that. That is pretty friggin' close, man. Problem is if I take more off, I could be screwed. So let me just try this again. Put a little bit of an angle on this part here.
that's pretty close there I just ride that up now how close am I you can kind of feel it feel it fitting eh, when it's like just as it starts to fit it's kind of getting there but it's not there yet so just a little bit more material that's why this is not easy that's why they say that making a balance staff is probably one of the hardest things to do so I need to take some inside material off as well Try this again. This is friggin' close, man. Well, the question is, can I stake that on with the amount of metal that's on there? Probably not. I think I gotta take even more. You do this like 500 times and then you're good. I can see the hump though. Shave this stuff down a bit. Well, this is eight, I think. So I don't want to take this down further than eight. All right, see what I got here. This goes on easily, and then it just, it's going to hang on right there, this is where it's going to fit, so I'm just seeing if that, how much grip do I have there, maybe just a tad more, you really got to watch it, I'm telling you, I've done this before, where you've, you're like, oh shit, I cut too much, the roller table is actually a little harder even, I think, than the balance, so I can see where it's standing up here, I'll just, Kind of trim it flat and then give it a little bit of an angle. There we go. And then a tiny bit of bevel. You gotta hit a bevel. Bevel is the word. That's the word of the day. So, yeah, that's gonna go on, I think. So, if I, if I leave it there, I can. I can see the material going in. So there you go. So that's at the right now it's at that next level as you can see. So and I've got I got to look at that and then I can see how much material I have there to pound it in with. And I think I'm good. I may take off just a tad more on the towards this side here. So I don't want to over friction fit it. Alright, this is scaring me. So I think that's enough. Enough. Yeah, 
that I can pound that in no problem. So that's that like I said showed you before, it's resting on there, so that's ready to be put in. So I can see a bit of the metal coming in now. I just want to make sure I don't have too much over overlap for the friction fit, and I don't think I do. So that my friends is perfect. So I should be able to stake that on, no issue. And that'll friction fit that balance on. And the back surface, sometimes you have to undercut, like they recommend that you undercut the uh, you undercut back here, right, just to make sure that it's uh, the balance will be square when it's put in there. So I'll just give that a quick touch. There we go. That's all it needs to undercut that. And then I I'm measure the, uh, the the other remaining remaining part because that's where the hairspring fits. And hopefully I didn't cut away too much. That is now at 10, just over 10. And what did I say it was before? I look at my little diagram. It says it's 8, so I can go down a bit more. And again, the best thing to do here is to start on the end here and then work your way up because. Um, you, you, you'll just be able to put the hairspring on and ride it up. I'm going to just take some material away on this side here. This graver is pretty good. It's fairly sharp. And again, I can see the angle here. A three degree angle. So... And I got a, a lot of material to take away here, so it's uh, the hairspring will fit on, but I think on the the end is too long, so I may have to file or get some of that, get rid of some of the end of that with a file or something, because that's way too long. I can probably use a very fine file and just rub it to get rid of that. So I will look at this and see if that's an eight. as it was in the other um, and when I go to the edge here I just want to go up to that rim that's the edge that starts the balance and just make sure that there's a defined there it is there Take the material away here. Now this is for the uh, hairspring side. So and what I'll do today is just cut it up to the uh, cut it up to that side, and then and then I won't bother. No, maybe finish the pivot off and. I won't bother doing showing the other stuff on video, so because you guys will be so bored, It'll be sickening. Okay, that's at nine, so it's just below nine right now. So eight was the fit, so I just going to remove a little bit more material from the top there. Just bear with me a second here while I chew the material down here. Alright, that should fit the hairspring, and then I just end up having to take material away to move the hairspring up. And with the hairspring, let me have a look at that, that is just under 8. And as I slide it, it's under 8 there, and right there it's over 8, right? That's halfway up, so you, you want the previous balance step was at, and that's almost 10 here, so I can bring this down a bit uh, not too much though because you want to 
you want to start fitting the balance or the hairspring next so so you just have to take a little bit of material away from this side here because I do have quite an angle here see how well that fits so so there's the hairspring in the jar like I said before nice and safe so I just take that hairspring like this and grab that and try not to lose it um, and then I just need to fit that on the end so clean it off with your finger a bit doesn't matter if you get a little finger oil on there it's no big deal and then I want to push this up a bit, see where it sits. So I'm just going to um, I'm going to let go of the uh, the tweezer here. See, it's springing a bit. So, and then I can use the ends of the tweezer here to see if it pushes up. I think it should, but I actually think I'm too close right now because I can't work on this really well. Yeah, so I can see it. It's going on, but it's uh, just starting to go on. So there's a lot more work to do. And you take your tweezers like this and put it on both sides of the part, like so, and then put your hand underneath and just pop it off like that. If you do it any other way, I find that uh, you'll you'll ruin the hairspring if you do it any other way. So so that still has a little bit of material to take off. It did not go over the top, so I'm going to just peel away some more material here from the end here. I'm going to ride that up pretty close to where I need to, where it needs to fit. I like for it to stop two thirds of the way up would be nice, right? So there it is. There. Remember, in a hairspring, you can uh, it it has a little bit of leniency because it actually uh, it will open up the collet will open up a bit. But uh, what you don't want to do is break the uh, the collet. Then you got to recall it the hairspring, and that's a whole other video. So there we go. Very close. carefully turn that around. I don't want to drop it because that's a big pain in the ass. Not like the, I haven't done that before. And I got to find the hole. So the lighting is perfect for the camera and shitty for me, by the way. So there we go. So I found the hole, and it looks like it's so it's riding up to that position right there and you just have to rock it back and forth to make sure you there we go so it's riding up to that position so if I look at that very carefully I've got about twice the width of where my uh, of where my uh, balance was, was fitting so about twice the width I'd also like to undercut the metal for the balance a little bit so so it's twice the width, um, and that just gives me an idea of how far I got to go down with that. So take that off again, store it, put it back in the jar, and so that's twice the width of that, right? But if I look at this, is that undercut properly? I want to make sure that that's nicely undercut. So I'm going to just touch that. For a second, well, I'm gonna take a little bit of material off first because it's twice the width, which means it was right there. That's where the hump is. So let me take that material away from the hump.
that I should do there. Well, let's see if I'm screwed or not. This is where you, uh, this is where the rubber hits the road, as they say, right? Just trying to grab the hairspring here. Of course, it's going to be upside down, right? It's never, they never land the right way, so just flip it over. You whiz, just flip over there, bugger. Yeah, bugger. All right, I've got the hairspring in my hand. Clean off the end a little bit. And I just have to fit that on somehow. Where's the hole for that? Yeah, that's right. Okay, there we go there. I gotta let go of it here somehow. I don't want to deform the hairspring by not letting go of it. Okay, there we go. Now I gotta just push it up and make sure it didn't go too far. Geez, it still seems to be stopping where that hump is. That's one big hump. Uh, yeah, I gotta take more material off of that. That is a big hump. So that was almost perfect. Um, there's about a, the same width of the collet remaining. So it's uh, it's almost there. So I just put that in here. Of course, that's wrong friggin' direction again. It's upside down again. So anyway, let me just get in close here and see if I can remove a bit more material. Keep the three degree angle at all times. All right, try that out. This is uh, takes a lot of patience, so I know I'm showing all this uh, in a single video. So luckily, there's a thing called fast forward on YouTube. So if you really get bored shitless, as they say, you can always fast forward this whole video and say, "Okay, I've had enough of that, Mister. You're boring the crap out of me." So there, there's. The hairspring sitting in there and let's see if it got past the hump i just want it to be just a bit past that stupid hump because when i pound that hairspring in i don't want it to be uh nope it's still sort of stuck there i don't want to spread it out too much when i pound it in place right because i'll have whole a whole other issue here so all right a little more just a bit more I can see it there too, because eh? it goes right up to here, and then I want it to get past that, so I'll just shave off a bit here. Definitely the three degrees, there's no doubt about it. I don't want to do too much now because I'll end up having to resize my collet, which I don't want to do. I've done that before too, by the way. It's uh, painful. Of course, the spring is upside down again. So I'll grab the hairspring. And again, try not to mangle the hairspring when you're doing this because it is uh, it is the hairspring. Clean off the part on the end like that and then oh yeah that's done now did I leave enough grip under I'm screwed nope that's perfect so that if you can see where it's sitting there it's absolutely perfect um, there's enough material I just take the, uh, the tweezers and push down on it a bit and there's enough material remaining here to uh, push that hairspring on. 
I actually don't want to push it on now because I don't have to t try to figure out how to take it off. So it's a little less than than the width of the collet itself. So oop, I dropped it. I dropped it, but the good news it's on the plastic thing back here, so we're good. Um, so that's done there. That's two parts done. So I got that part, I got the hairspring part, and now if I measure this, have a, have a look at this, right, and look at where the, uh, where my line is. I got way too much metal on the end there, so I have to take this down a bit. So what I'm going to do is mark, mark where I think I need to take it down, because it's too long, way too long. Normally I don't make it this long, I just make it very close. So what I do is line up the the most the largest diameter of that edge where the where the um, where the uh, balance will touch the back here. So the first level that I cut, then the second level is where the hairspring goes on. So I just make sure that that is where it needs to be, and then I take my. So I want to make sure that I've got. I just make a line here because. And I'm eyeballing the line here to Okay, I can see a clear line on the end there. And now I'm going to look at where that sits when I put the line on there. So I can take two hands here and just bring it up, look at where the pivot is. Oh yeah, I can go way inside that line. Yeah, I have tons of material remaining. Yeah, and also that first level, I could take a bit more off of that, but dangerous as hell. So dangerous, I tell you. So if I could probably undercut this just a bit more, there we go. Now I can form a rivet on that, right? By undercutting it so I just did an undercut on that and I can rivet that if I need to and then this should be cut back I think it's twice the, the length that I put in there looks like it's twice the length of the end there so so if I get that up there I'm trying to get the radico from sticking on my finger here so that's my first line right there so I think I got to go up I think I gotta make a second line. First line's there, second line would be right around here. So this might be where how much material I actually have to remove from this. Let me have a look. Because I can just cut this away with my graver if it's the right length. So I can turn this the other way as well. Because this side here had the good pivot. And then just put the pivot against the back and see where that line ends up. And that's almost perfect. And I'll just measure it the other way again. Because if you measure it the way I just did, you get a perfect dimension, but your pivot, it has to have a good pivot on that side. So, And that side there tells me that's perfect too. So if I cut that away, don't take any more than where that line is, I'll be safe. So I'm trying to unstick the uh, radico from my finger here. So if I cut this away, right there, I'll leave a little bit more, right? Let's cut that away right there. And it broke off. It's perfect. So that is where the end of the, the pivot needs to be, right? So it needs to be, if I look at that, hopefully I didn't screw it up. If you see these two side by side, 
it's just like this like that so and I got no room for error there I got the perfect pivot size so I just have to uh, make my cone my mark where my cone needs to be which needs to be just slightly back from where that is so I'm gonna make two marks I'm gonna make the mark where the cone needs to be where, where any code needs to start and I'm gonna make the mark where the uh, where the uh, make the mark where the cone needs to start which would be right about here I think for the pivot I'm just gonna make the mark right there and see if I'm close so you make that first mark and then look at the pivot again I need to get more erotico because this is freaking awful I get the world's smallest piece of erotico here and it's like okay stop this nonsense grab a big gigantic piece of erotico and then put the pivot on there and I can do some serious pivot stuff there we go so there's a big giant piece of erotico how's that look at that that's like erotico from heaven so that's where I said the line needed to be right so if I get up close here and then have a look at that that would be like this and then this and then my pivot it's hard to do man yeah, it's hard to do just get this in the way you're measuring the hardest part of all this so so if my pivot were to start here that's no good that's like i got too much room from oh no i don't actually there's where it is there so see that that's the perfect distance which means the the uh, pivot is there, so that line is actually pretty good. And the next line would be that would cone down and then cone up again. So I need to cone down and up again at the, that. So second one is around a little more than the a little more than the width of that first one. So the second line, the second line would be probably around here right around here I think I think I'm touching the camera with my forehead somewhere around here I think right there so so this I'm gonna make sure the camera is not touching the uh, touching the, the I don't think it's touching it. <laughs> so now the trick is is to cut that first pivot. So and if I look at this again, let me just look at how tight that is. That is pretty friggin tight. That's a small small pivot. So I need to remove some material there. So I'm just gonna take it down a bit not too much but just a bit and I'm going to go to my smaller gravers so I'm going to start right here so. Now, I'm going to flip to my round uh, graver, my round, uh, I think the uh, two, this one here. So that's, well, that's flat, two round is what I want to do. And I got to just get it down low enough so I can start using my, uh, my pivot file, right? So I just want to get it down to pivot file distance. So that's that you know let's put the graver in here like this and I haven't measured the, the diameter of that pivot yet I'm going to in a few seconds I'm going to take the other one and see if I can measure it using that one so I have to lower my 
tool rest because it's way high for this thing. And I may have to move it away a bit. So, because I don't want to be cutting the material. Uh, that's not too bad there. That's pretty friggin' tight, so let me just take some material off here. You see, I'm making that concave, right? I'm actually going to get the other, the uh, two flat out too, because I want to remove some material on that, and I can't really get at it with the two rounds. So, you just get the two flat out for a second and keep the video running so I don't screw things up. So, it's already at 57 minutes, which is pretty long, but I'm showing some pretty detailed work, and uh, I wanted to get to the filing part before I turn the video off so you guys can see so you get I want to get to the filing part so you guys can see what that looks like um, my wife said you gotta stop walking away from moving away from the camera and then talking so I got a, uh, a little piece I gotta remove there so I gotta change lenses here because my lens needs to be a lot thicker I think so I need to go to a 25 20 or 25 so this is like super duper close up I'm hoping this doesn't hit my camera on my head. You know what? I may hit the camera on the head with this. Oh, there it is there. So it's almost, the camera is touching my head. So I'm gonna just try to do this anyway. There, that's not bad there. Now I'm going to go to, I think this was a 10 before. And I think I might have to go to a 15. No, this was a 15 already. Holy shit. So this was pretty close. But I don't think I can finish the uh, pivot unless I go to 25. So let me have another look at the pivot here. Let me have another look at that. I might be able to do it with 15. So now what you do is get out the pivot file. So here's the pivot file here. Um, and there's a coarse end, as I've said in another video. There's the filing part and there's a burnishing part. The burnishing part is just steel with some lines on it, as you can see. And you move that back and forth and that smoothens it out. And the filing part has got the uh, rounded... There's a, there's a corner here, an edge here that's rounded, like this one right here. And then there's the non-rounded part. And you can use that to file down the... Uh, the uh, pivot. I think this was made for left-handers, by the way. So, um, if I go underneath the pivot, it might work. But it it's made to to be able to file the pivot without uh, without uh, removing the material from the cone part. So, I'm going to see if I can use it from the back here to try this out here. I suspect if I use some cutting oil it would work better. I also use a stone to do this. And uh, to remove the material. But I'm going to try to just use the pivot file this time.
I'm going to get the original piece here and look how good or bad that cone is and where it's starting and stuff like that. So yeah, that's so I can take more material off that to make it go down more. So what I'll do is bring that down a bit, first of all. So I can probably use this number, the round one here again. Yeah, no, I'll take it down with my take it down a bit with this this here because it needs to go down just a bit because it's just too big that might be good enough there and then this, the pivot on the end would have to go um, go down again as well. Let me look at my files here. What do I got? This is a round. It's not. That's a square four. But I think it was a square four and a round two case. So I may have screwed up. Let me just remove that right now and get a round four. That might work. Big ass round four. A round four, as they say. And tighten that on. So this is a round four. So yeah, that's round all right. And I can take this down a bit to get the air. This is for the oil catch. You see how well that works? Even my stupid magnetic thing. Then I'm going to take it, take the pivot on the end here and use this round four to bring it down a bit more before I start filing. There. Now here's where I got to be super careful because I could uh, screw this up royally. I'm trying to be on the right side of this thing. So I need a round two now is what I need. So, is this my round two? Yeah, there's my round two. So. I need to uh, just take a bit of material off the end here before I start using my file again. That's enough. Now you don't want to do too much uh, with your with your uh, graver on the end when you're working on the pivot, because if you do, you're likely to push the the graver forward and just snap the pivot off. It just doesn't work that way. So, so when I get close here, I can actually use the pivot file. You should put a little oil on the pivot file too. So, if I can just find that, I think I said something about using it the other way, but. You always use it from underneath because you can't see the friggin' part if you don't. So I just haven't made a I haven't made a bounce staff in like what has it been? Um, two weeks. <laughs> so let me have a look at this. 
take the plastic off the end because the less weight on that the better and then I just want to be able to take some material off of this thing I'm going to use the end part so like I said before there's it's smooth surface here and then rough on the edge so it should work on the pivot and not on the cone part I'm having issues right now. I think it's the angle I'm working this at is sucks. Plus I can't see anything and the light's in the way. Jesus, this is hard to do with this camera in the way, boys. Keep hitting it with my head too. It's not easy with a camera there to work this pivot. I may go to the, my stone because I think it's easier with one hand to work the stone than it is to work with the, uh, the pivot with the uh, pivot file. What does it look like anyway? Yeah, it's taking a bit of material off. I wish it was uh, working a little faster, but it's not. Yeah, I might end this video soon so I can start working on this. I don't want to screw it up. I'm going to get the stone out for a second. I'm going to show you what I use for a stone, and then I'll stop. And then I'm going to go to the post office and do some post office stuff. Because I've had this for way too long, Jerry. Way too long. What do we got? It's almost three o'clock and it's time to go to the post office. So this stone here is what I use. This Arkansas stone. It's funny, my wife, I was saying, she goes, what type of stone is that? He says, Arkansas. She goes, do you mean Arkansas? When, yeah, okay, I mean Arkansas. I said Arkansas, which is like, are you stupid boy? All right, so... I'm not sure what edge to use on this. I think I'll use this edge that I just oiled. Alright, I spread the oil a bit so it's not accumulating. Let's see if this, my forehead is right where the stupid camera is, so this one here I can work with one hand, I think. And I've actually made most of my pivots with this. The last one I made was with the pivot file. But I do have to get in close with a 25. I can't do it with 15 lens on there, which means i got to turn the camera off. So, But this is basically... i got to get my other hand in here. Usually I can do it with one hand, but today is not... Maybe I had too much coffee. Because I got a lot of material left here that I probably could have shaved it down even further. It's going to take me a week to get rid of that. Anyway, so what you do here, I've shown you on a, a million videos, is you shave it down. You have to know the diameter of the pivot. I use my pivot gauge for that. And I also have pin gauges that I can use. That will show me the, uh, the appropriate uh, size of the jewel hole that has to go into. And if I use those devices, I have uh, a great chance of making the right size pivot. So, I think I'll end it now because I've shown you the 99% of what I want to do and I have other videos online that will show you the how to cut the uh, roller table part so I have like a two hour video that shows you all of this but today I just wanted to get more detailed close 
and show you how some of this stuff is done. So I haven't measured the pivot yet, but it's probably about a 0.12 or 0.11, 0.12 size pivot. Probably 0.11. Is from a uh, Hamilton 16, 17 Joule Hamilton, size 16. So I'm sure that the pivot's probably a 0.11. So you see how this works? It's taking it down nicely right now. As you can see, the size is much improved, and I use the rounded, the rounded part, the rounded part of this stone. This uh, Arkansas stone here to I actually hold it flat but then I move it a bit of an angle there and then I shave it like this and then I flatten it out to get the end and then I move it like this get a bit of an angle and then flatten it out to get the end again I just keep doing that and keep working it so so that's what the uh, the balance uh, staff looks like right now the next step I'll do is measure the uh, the back end so I'll look at this here and say okay where does the line start for the roller table for the back end of the roller table where that goes on so i'll look at where that that is in the current one and look at where the line starts cut the line and then just cut the material right down for the roller table using the same technique i use for this end of it here so it's uh and hopefully you can see the pivot really good because i didn't too, do too bad a job does that look good in a blue background yeah, it's not too bad i'll zoom in again here and just have a See if zooming in helps a bit though. Yeah, there we go. That's not too bad. I still have work to do on it. Um, maybe a black background works better. Don't know. How about a microchip background? Let me grab a the back end of a Pentium microchip from this from the there, that's not too bad. Yeah, so that's anyway, that's how you do it. So the cuts the two cuts are there and the pivot I just need to work with a stone, but I can't do it well. I'm on camera, plus it's a waste of video time, right? So I'm going to shut her down now. Uh, <clears throat> that's your video for, for Sunday. Uh, i got to work tomorrow, so obviously no video tomorrow. Uh, but i got to go also go to the post office and go for a drive with my wife. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you a little more detail on how to, how to finish off or how to make a balance staff. So I've had other videos on how to make them, but I don't think i got as precise on how to fit it, how to fit the parts on. Not sure. Anyway, thanks a lot, and I'll catch you on the backstop.